Well, I'm out of facts of Mars. For probably a couple of years now, I've been wondering what these scientists were doing because there seems to be this inane fascination with Proxima B. Proxima B orbits what's known as a flare star, uh, 4.3 somewhere around that light years away from here. And it takes only like days or something, I forget. It don't take it very long, by our standards, to go around the sun. And this is one that they wanted to send those miniature probes to. Well, uh, I've been saying for over two years it's probably not habitable. I've been saying it for a while, I don't know if it's two years, but uh, here we go. The closest potentially habitable planet may not be so habitable after all. The atmosphere of Proxima Centauri B could have been whisked away from by strong winds blowing from the star. It's just one of dozens of rocky planets known to exist in the habitable zone zones around stars. The reasons that scientists believe can provide the conditions for liquid water on the surface of orbiting planets. But habit habitability depends on so much more than water. Two papers in Astrophysical Journal Letters consider one metric that has a huge influence on a planet's climate, its parent star. All except our own uh, star, by the way. Nope. Our own star, according to these scientists, doesn't have any effect on our climate. It's just what comes out of our tailpipe that does. Anyway, models described in these papers show that the influence of stellar wind or the charged particles of star emits. If a star has strong periods of activity, particles could erode the atmosphere over hundreds of millions of years, making it impossible for life as we know it to exist on the surface. A similar process could have happened on Mars, with many scientists saying the planet once had a thick atmosphere, but the sun eroded it over time. Let's see if I can remember, it's like Project Stardust or something, they want some of these microprobes there. I don't know what for. The traditional definition and climate models of the habitable zone consider only the surface temperature. Lead author unpronounceable of Princeton University said in a statement, but the stellar wind can significantly contribute to long-term erosion and atmospheric loss of many exoplanets, so climate models tell only part of the story. You know, it's funny. I uh, did an entire episode of our station on about Proxima B, called Homecoming, in which uh, some of the crew land on Proxima B, and they're taken prison. Most of them are taken prisoner by uh, the reptilians, and well, they all have to get off the planet because the uh, star's getting ready to erupt and fry everything there. You know, I, I've been doing videos about this. Operation Starshot was uh, uh, one Starshot where they want to send probes. But I've doing video, been doing videos about this and saying, hey, this is a flare star. It's probably not habitable as a result. And it takes these scientists this long. I mean, come on. I figured this out. You, I figured out this. Figured this out a long time ago. It probably wasn't habitable. I kind of hinted at that in that episode of Mars Station. That's where they pick up that um, other ship, the uh, USS Fortune. It's a Federation runabout, if you can believe it. Star Trek 
crap. But I love it. I'm not gonna blow any of them up either. Sorry, it's not gonna happen. Researchers conclude that the atmosphere of Proxima Satori B would only be retained if pressure from the stellar wind is low and the planet has a magnetic field to deflect particles. Otherwise, they wrote over time the stellar wind would strip the planet's atmosphere, which would become so thin that evaporated water in the atmosphere couldn't fall as rain. Our results include indicate that Proxima Centauri B and several exoplanets are generally not capable of supporting an atmosphere or sufficiently long time scales when the stellar wind pressure is high. Bonnie said. This is not even talking about the radiation. Takes these scientists this long to figure this out? I was saying this two years ago. Unbelievable. Even worse is what happens to the type of star that Proxima Centauri B orbits. Plant is nearby a red dwarf star which is smaller and produces less energy than our sun. Habitable zone around these stars can change as the star evolves. Specifically when a red dwarf is young, it is prone to producing high stellar winds. This means that a young nearby planet can lose much of its atmosphere before life has a chance to develop. And this goes on and on. I've been saying this for two years or something. You know, something like that. I don't know the exact time frame, but, uh, what the dickens? It's taking these scientists this long to figure out this may not be habitable? And here I am, just some guy uh, on YouTube talking about it? Sheesh! Oh well. That's, uh, when cookie, cookie crumbles, I guess. I'm in the wrong business. I'm out of facts of Mars. Thanks for watching.